Go hey guys, Mike Chen here. Dan Chen here. This is the Double Chen Show. Oh! This is Super Nim and Batman coming right at ya. That's right, guys. This is a new show we wanted to try out and see if you like it. If you do, we'll keep on rolling with it. Yeah. So no girls here, just us guys. Yeah. Heck yeah, no girls allowed. Boys club. So we're basically gonna, like me and Mike love talking about stuff, all kinds of stuff. As you guys know, we like to talk about movies, food, anything. Squatting. Yeah. Squatting. And we, you know, we lived in China, we lived in America. <coughs> we feel like we've got a wide range of uh, knowledge about different uh, industries and things. Yeah, so we wanna talk about different topics, yeah. uh, things that matter to the East and West. Exactly. We also wanna uh, give you guys some life advice. Yeah. We, we've been we've been we've been alive for a little while, I guess. Dude, I mean, cause we keep saying like we're the love doctors, and we gotta prove it. Yeah, we gotta prove it. Yeah, so we're gonna give you guys some advice on yeah. like school, on relationships, everything, and mostly we want to basically involve you guys yes. with us. So we're, this is the first episode. Obviously, we don't have a lot to work off of. Um, we actually had a couple people send in topics, mm -hmm. which we can talk about. Yep. Um, but in the future, we want you guys to send in stuff you want us to talk to talk e about. Exactly. So we're gonna start this off with a segment called East Meets West. This is a segment where we want to talk about topics that are relevant for people in the East and the West. Our first topic is damn. When you grew up in a Asian household, mm -hmm. um, your parents were probably pretty strict on you in terms of education. Mm -hmm. Okay, now, do you feel the pressure helped you achieve success in life? Okay, that's a, that's a really good question because I had, I had really, really weird uh, standards that my parents set growing up. Um, I can't I can say that me personally like my parents definitely pressured me to like play an instrument They didn't let me what go. Do you play? I play piano. Can you still play piano? Yeah, I can still All right, play cool, piano. cool. Yeah. Oh, okay. I think I honestly yeah, I thank them for that today Yeah, and and uh, I actually I actually hope that they I actually kind of wish that they pressured me a little bit more to keep playing because I stopped playing after like a few years Yes, they hated when I went to play sports with my friends, right? And I love sports so, you know, they were like... So typical Asian parents. You, typical you Asian. don't want you to get hurt. Yeah, put down the baseball bat. Oh, dude, they won't even let me join Boy Scouts. Because you're going to be camping, and you know, camping would just like kill you. Right, or, or they... Okay, you know what it was? After the Boy Scout meeting, all the uh, American and non-Asian Boy Scouts, they would roughhouse, like on the yard. Right. Because that's what kids did. That's what kids do. It was like a sign of like, you know, brotherhood, camaraderie, sure. right? And my mom was like, oh, hell no, you're not going to be. It's like, I was like, mom, this is just, it's, it, we're not fighting. But they don't understand that. They don't understand. And I remember I was devastated. I was absolutely you're devastated. You were the only kid that wasn't allowed I was, to. She would not. So all your friends probably thought you were weird too. Yes. I didn't get to go to camp because she thought camp. And she's like, what do you do at time. camp? You yeah. should be studying. Be, right, because she's she, her idea of a Western camp is, you know, they go and they, you know, just have fun. Right. Which is what you do. Right. Because it's summertime. Right. But I had to go to summer school, summer Chinese school. Sure. I know, like, for other Chinese kids, yeah. they had, like, eight extra... You no, know, they had to do instrument. Yeah. They had to dance. They had to, like, do Chinese school. No free time. No, zero free time. Right. I think if I grew up like that... Mm -hmm. It would be, I, I probably wouldn't have liked my childhood that would much. Would you put similar pressure on your kids? No. And here's why, because we don't live in China. We don't live in China. Like American parents think, hey, my, if my kid does uh, art or whatever, or the, you know, or instruments, it's not like they have to become the next, uh, you know, whatever prodigy. It's just there, I want them to become, have multiple experiences. For Chinese kids, it's all about the output, the, the result. And when you grow up in America, there's so much things that you can experience, but you lose out on those because you are, you know, hitting the books 24-7. So a lot of like Asian kids, not ABCs, but people that are half and half like right. us, yes. they're really socially awkward. And, and that's not, that's not a rip. That's, yeah. they will tell you, they'd be like, I, I don't like social situations. The American parents would be like, oh, okay, hey, you want to be the president one day? Right. You want to be, uh, you want to be a firefighter? Yeah, you want to be, you a wanna be Donald Trump? You want to be an anything. entrepreneur? It seems like the Amer uh, Chinese parent is always doctor, lawyer, right. engineer, engineer, scientist, exactly. uh, mm, choose one right. of these four. Advancement in American society is mostly predicated on social skills. Right. Right. Like high level managers are paid to manage. What do they have? People skills. Me and you both What's, work. What are top CEOs? They're actually salespeople. Most exactly. CEOs were salespeople promoted to be or, or they're great motivators. Business people. But I think also another major thing is that when Chinese parents put so much pressure like they do in America, 
because it's more free in America and you have access to fun, the kid starts to resent them a little bit. Yeah. And that's where you're getting a lot of the young Asian you know, resentment toward their parents. And that's why a lot of times they're like, wow, I know they do this out of love, but they're really like, dude, seriously. like, yeah, Why are you so stern all right. the time? You have to always put on that face. And that's right. why it's all so difficult for them to, or each other to express emotions. Exactly. Like love. Exactly. You know, I never told my parents I loved them because right. it's just, I just can't even fathom it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so Asian parents, if you're watching, right. smile more. Yeah. <laughs> Give your kid a hug. Let them go to prom. Yeah, let them get their <laughs> needs dirty. Let yeah. them, you know, go ride a bike and get home and all muddy and crap, you know? Right. One thing I want to talk about is the lack of really good, like, the lack of really good Chinese food in America. <laughs> okay. okay. Um, and here's here's what I mean by that. Like, you can always find, I guess, the lack of really good Chinese food in New York City. There's so much better Asian food, Chinese mainly, outside of New York. Like, New York just doesn't have yeah, really good Boston Chinese food. Chinese food sucks. It's still better than New York. What? I, I no was, way. dude, I'm no telling way. you. No way. Not even, not even close. Damn. Not even close. Damn. Name one authentic restaurant in Boston in, China, dude. in Chinatown. Okay. I don't know the names. <laughs> like, I don't know the names. I'm telling you, like, they're all better. I don't Dude, I'm so. telling you. I gotta disagree with you. Okay, you. so do you agree with my whole statement? Or if you, you know, what is I, your take I on that? I think in general, there's a lack of authentic Chinese food around the U.S. Okay. Um, I think L.A. definitely has it made. L.A. has awesome restaurants. Yeah. Asian restaurants. Love it. Best Korean barbecue, best hot pot. Here's also something that I'm throwing into the mix that you might not be considering. I know Asian restaurants aren't known for their service, right? but inherently, like, New York Chinese restaurants, the people there are really rude. Sure. But that's, not, but that's not the case in other Chinese cities, okay, uh, other yeah. Chinatowns. But the reason for them being rude, okay. I think, is because they're in New York City. Oh, so New York is an outlier in terms of the U.S. Yes, it is. In terms of the world. Yeah, I mean, I lived everywhere in the U.S. Uh, you know, I'm just saying, like, I lived all around the U.S., right. about five, six different states. Yeah. I live in New York City. New York City is the outlier. Like, people here are just like, you know, they're angry about something. Right. I grew up in different... You know what? Actually, it's funny. Between me and you, we lived in a lot of cities sure. in the U.S. So, when I lived in San Fran, L.A., I spent some time in Chicago. I go to D.C. all the time, um, and I have Chinese food there it's so much better the service like people they're just nicer DC Chinese food. dude dc oh, chinese food is so not bad dude oh. in dc D chinatown it's not bad oh my god dc chinatown is one of the worst places i've ever been to all right maybe life. i cannot <laughs> believe you don't know jack about oh, authentic chinese food dc all chinatown right. me and you definitely don't see all right it's amazing that me and you can go out to eat to chinese places as many places that we can go that because even makes sense. Here's, here's why we can't. I <laughs> pick the place. <laughs> and then we can't. Yeah. All right. Every time me and Mike go out, Mike's like, all right, I have to say, though, you have definitely broadened my Chinese food world in New York. But I still don't like a lot of the place we go to because it's dirty. There's, I know where they get their food. It's freaking disgusting. The service is horrible. Like, horrible. All right, here's the thing. I don't care if you're nice to me. <laughs> Hey, as long as your food tastes good, I don't care if you're, you're nasty to me. As long okay. as you don't spit in my food, I'm okay with you. All right. Dan, you guys got to understand, Dan has a very uh, chic I, taste. It's not chic. It's, <laughs> it's up Can I please get, no. Can I please at least get a smile when you put down like my mop of tofu? You know, you go to Chinatown, the flavors might be good, but every, the beef is like all different sizes. You know, like I, I'm saying that's not authentic. Because authenticity is not just in flavor, right? Okay, okay. I, I, I see where you're coming from in terms of pure traditional Chinese culture authenticity. Right. Yeah. Uh, for me, I'm just like, yeah. <laughs> tastes well, pretty dang good to me. That's because you came from freaking Missouri. <laughs> where the hell are trying these chicken wings, boy? <sighs> you yeah. know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm just, here's, here's the bottom line, guys. Trust my taste more than his. You know, my friends, I was in college and a couple of my friends, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm from, you know, I went to college in Missouri. Yeah. It's, yeah, Missouri. <laughs> That's right. We say Missouri, where we say misery. Uh, I was in college. This town was like 17,000 people. So my college was really small. So a couple, a couple of my friends, they, they, you know, winter break came and gone and they came back and they're like, hey, Mike, we went to New York Chinatown. I don't know why it's important to tell me that. <laughs> sure. Tell the Chinese guy that of they course. went to Chinatown. Of, of course. course. So like, hey Mike, we went to China. It's two girls. We went to China. I'm like, oh, okay, good. What'd you have? Like, we had, we had like, you know, 
Jin Rochelle's chicken and chicken and broccoli. It was so good. I'm like, you could have had that at Uncle Wong's cabin down the street. Dude. Oh, in Missouri. Man. Why'd you drive like, you know, a couple thousand miles to New York City and eat chicken and broccoli? Bro, I bet you it wasn't called Uncle Wong's Cabin. <laughs> Whatever. There's no cabin in yeah, the name. I'm, look, every You're single- You just like a freaking roadside Uncle... barbecue at a Chinese place, man. <laughs> okay, okay, Uncle Wong's house. Yeah. Uncle Chen's walk. Yeah, 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 Uncle Chen's walk. Bamboo like Village. Yeah. Kanji <laughs> City. Whatever, Golden China. Oh, man. Do all Chinese restaurants have to be named the same, like, something yeah. dragon, sea dragon, well, this is like dragon? All right, so segueing into our second segment, which is life advice, you had mentioned that uh, basically, okay, uh, this, this is a segment where me and Mike are going to choose a topic and give you advice on it, whether you like it or not. <laughs> <laughs> if, if you want us to not talk about what we come up with, Ask us for right. advice, and right. we'll give it to you. Or else we're just gonna give you random life advice. <laughs> but actually, not so random, because you had mentioned that you went to college in Missouri. Yes, and this topic, this uh, this time we're gonna focus on colleges. Exactly. So I know that, I, and I went to college in Northeastern. Right, uh, so kind of completely different. Kind of completely different. went to a big college, uh, I went to the smallest college possible. You went to a college in, I guess, the South or the Midwest? Well, Missouri, it's the Midwest. Missouri? Missouri. Yeah. Oh crap, my joke is terrible. I, I was not college. Alabama. All right, that's it. It's in the Midwest, right? Midwest. And a small town in the Midwest. 6,000 6, people college. Wow. My question is for you and about Greek life, about fraternities. Sure. Because I have a lot of Chinese friends, you included, yep. who actually are in France. Sure. And myself chose not to be in one. Here's the thing. You, you, you went to college in a place where you don't need Greek life for there to be something to do. Okay. My my college, like, let me let me tell you guys what we did on Friday nights, okay? I, I'm I'm 100% serious. I'm not even joking at all. Be this is before. <laughs> before I was in a fraternity. We would go to Walmart on Friday nights. Wait, no wait, joke. you were in college? I was in, oh I was in college, and the conversation would be, what do you guys want to do tonight? You wanna to go to Walmart and hang out? <laughs> yeah. So we were gonna Walmart and we were like, you know, play with a fishing rod. Like seriously, just hang out there for seriously? hours. The Walmart was 24 hours. We will go to Walmart oh, and hang God. out. And then we will go to the only other restaurant open at night, it was, which was called uh, Pancake City in my in my town. It's this Greek a grease pit. And uh, you go there and you have a big stack of pancakes like three o'clock in the morning after your Walmart fun. Uh, that's what we did. That's what we did. There's nothing to do in Kirksville, Missouri, besides like, you know, go to Walmart or tip a cow or something. But there had to be like a mall that you go hang out There's at. There's no mall. It's Kirksville, Missouri. There's no mall. Okay, but here's the thing. Like, Greek life is this. Uh, you, when you go to college, you either already made up your mind. You either okay. love Greek life or you don't. Some people go into college thinking, I'm gonna go join a fraternity sorority right away. Okay. Some people go in there thinking, I hate these people. They're a bunch right. of statistics. Right. I went in there, thinking there were a bunch of, uh, you know, people I probably don't want to hang out with. Because mm -hmm. you know what? Because there's actually, a stigma attached to yeah, it. Yeah, and I didn't drink much in college, and, and I don't even like drinking, so uh, I thought, okay, well, if I don't drink, and I'm, I'm not trying to pick up a girl, then why am I trying to turn it? Yeah, that's what I would think. <laughs> and part of that is true. Part of that is true. Let's just be realistic, okay? Yeah. Let's be realistic here. A lot of people are like, oh, I joined for the brotherhood. No, no you're no. joining to you're hang out with- You're lying if you say that. You're lying. <laughs> you know, I joined later in my in my college college days i didn't join like when i was a freshman or anything and i and i do hope you guys who uh, are thinking about it take your time the frats are or sororities are they're always going to be there take your time go to college you know experience everything before you because once you join a fraternity or a sorority at least your first semester is gone like that's your pledge semester like your okay. your entire life would revolve around a sorority or a fraternity don't join right away because that's all you would know a lot of people couldn't handle it. Right. You're a freshman, you just got to college, all of a sudden, hey guys, let's party every night, here's all these mandatory stuff you have to do. Right. A lot of people drop out of college. What's expected of you, you know, like, things that people don't know who are not in fraternity. A lot of Asians, you know, they tell me, you know, they uh, they join Asian fraternities. Oh yeah, yeah. Which is fine, you know, I didn't, I joined a- uh, What was yours? Huge, I joined Delta Chi, which was, uh, which is a uh, huge national fraternity. Uh -huh. You know, there's still uh, people I, I stay in touch with, uh, but I think it's kind of delusional to think that I'm join, joining a sorority or a fraternity and these are going to be my brothers or sisters for my entire life and these are going to be my whatever. I, I think like 
uh, friends, you can meet them anywhere. You can meet them in biology class or whatever club. Right. And you know, don't go in there with any expectations. Right. Uh, when I joined the fraternity, the, the, the first semester, the semester I joined was tough. If they tell you they don't haze, <laughs> you are lying, okay? <laughs> There's hazing. Right. All right, just the degree of how much. Right. And don't be one of those when you're facing a really bad hazing situation. Yeah. Don't feel pressure to stay there. Yeah. Dude, That's get insane. Out. Get yeah. out. Sometimes it feels like you go into a dorm and all of a sudden everyone on your floor is it's rushing something. Right. And don't feel pressure to do yeah. that because That's once you're really in there. really hard though. You can imagine. I mean, you, your first year, everyone's getting into something and you, yeah. you feel like you might be missing yeah. out. Yeah. And, and honestly, yeah, it's fun. It's fun. There's a lot of parties you go to, mm -hmm. but you know, there's more to college life than just parties. There's more to college life than just girls or guys. Not in Missouri. <laughs> <laughs> Missouri was like, that's all Okay, got. if you went, if you go to the school Mike goes to, if it's between Walmart on Friday nights and frats, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna do the frat thing. We talked about a lot about college experiences in this segment. We wanna give advice to you guys who are in college, we're about to go to college. Now, you and I were both RAs. Resident assistants. Resident, well, we called it resident advisors. Well, actually, Same we thing. called it student advisors. Ah, we okay. called them essays. Like, ah, hey, essay. Hey, what up, essay? Yeah. Was this something that brought you a more fulfilling college experience? I would say yes. Yes, for me, um, okay, init initially, I don't know about you, but why most people want to be RAs is because it's free room and board. Um, and at first, it was really for that. So I was a really, really bad RA. But then later on, as I did it, I got to know a lot of my residents. Um, I really enjoyed it. And here's the part I really, really enjoyed. Um, I got to know so many residents. And like a lot of RAs, like they'll do the paperwork, they'll do all those tedious things, but they don't actually put in the time to get to know people. I would advise anybody and everybody to go do it. Um, because I did it for three and a half years. Yeah. And I can say without a shadow of a doubt, uh, being an RA was the reason I became less shy. Mm. It was the reason I was able to develop a lot of the social skills I have today. Because you have to. You have to. You actually are forced to talk to people. Right. I, I remember my first meeting. It was 80 residents, and I'm up there trying to talk. And kid you not, okay? Uh, I never, I'm, I'm a bad, horrible public speaker. Like, horrible public speaker. Yeah, I was, I was a horrible public speaker. I was so shy. And I'm standing in front of all these people. And I'm trying to smile. I can feel my, my, my mouth twitching. Because I'm like, freaking having a stroke on my mouth. That's how nervous I was. I was having a stroke in my mouth. Yeah, it was like literally. And I'm like, I'm like, stop. And I can't, it won't stop. I'm trying to talk. I'm just shaking. When you go, uh, interview for internships, which every one of you should do, because yep. that's how you're gonna get a job. Yeah. <laughs> and I interned at a lot of great places, and I can say without a doubt, almost every one of those answers uh, for those questions during their job interview uh, was experiences I have uh, from being an RA. Definitely. I was not the most responsible RA. Sure, I had a great time. I met some awesome people. A lot of people I still keep in contact with and are some of my closest friends today. But, you know, I also g did really bad in class because you know I party too much. Do this, this experience will really be able to open you up socially and be able to really just expand your horizon on life. Yeah. And you're gonna not regret it, so. And okay. if your parents, they might think it's weird or whatever, because I think Asian parents think that that's like, you're an RA, like they why? They don't even know what that is. They don't even know what that is, and they're like, you just don't tell why? them, you're like, hey, yeah, free room yeah. and board. Okay. Oh yeah, if you tell them that, they're like, what? All right, that was the end of our advice session. Like we said, guys, we love giving advice about relationships, college. Hey. I went to college for like six years for undergrad. <laughs> I'm not proud Woo! of it. Mike, much better student. But, Woo! you know, he... <laughs> it was actually five and a half. I took half a year off. <laughs> you had to. But dude, you know what? So uh, we have, we both, you know, we're both like, been out of school for a while now, so we have a lot of advice to offer. Yeah. So guys, do not hesitate. We love to hear what kind of advice you wanna, you want to, uh, and don't don't limit it to college and after. You and know, high school too. Yeah. Because I, I definitely, when I look at, back on high school, there's a lot of things I would have done different. Yeah. We're not gonna be like old Chinese grandpa you or anything like. Oh, <laughs> I was back in the day. Back in the day. There hmm. was no cafeteria. <laughs> <laughs> Which Chinese grandma is that? Yeah, guys, send us your questions on Facebook. We're on YouTube. And the double chance, 
or give you some good life advice. Nice. All right, guys, this is our rapid fire segment where me and Dan each came up with three topics each to talk about for only 60 seconds. We can talk, we can debate, we can disagree, we can agree. Who knows? But the key is, he doesn't know which three topics I'm gonna bring up. I don't know which three topics he's gonna bring up. So, but when we bring him up, we better start talking. That's about right. It. 60 seconds on the clock. Your first topic, go. Scarlett Johansson. Not good looking until the Avengers. What? Dude, That's you right. are tripping, bro. Okay, you have you not seen Lost in Translation? No, like, is that some kind of sissy flick? No, that's literally her breakout movie when the world, like 10 years ago, when the world realized how hot this woman she is. She wasn't that hot. I never found her attractive until the Avengers when she was kicking ours. Uh, her lips, her uh, too eyes. Big. Uh, too big? Uh, Are you, what do you like girls with thin I okay, lips? I don't like okay Angelina Jolie Angelina Jolie. Do you like her lips? Yes, too big. Oh my like freaking there's no such thing as oh lips too big. God, like no such thing. Suck your face in. Okay, her voluptuous figure. Sure, but because but she I don't know her roles. I don't like Woody Allen movies. I just don't. She's, she's not. She's never. No, she's not a Woody Allen girl. She's always in Woody Allen movies. Name one Woody Allen movie she's in. Dude, I can name his movies. I don't watch them, but I know she's in all his movies, dude. Okay. My topic: sixty seconds. Spicy food. Uh, I love spicy food, but I cannot handle that much because you know I'm from Shanghai. But I do it. I love, I love Szechuan. I love Mexican. I love it. I love. I, I remember first time we took this guy to to Sichuan. Like it was, <laughs> the place was air conditioned. It seemed like this guy was standing in like the Death Valley, just sweating, like balls of sweat. I was sweating so much that I think even the restaurant people were like, "Yo, is this guy okay?" I don't even think I can date a girl who doesn't love spicy food. Uh, no, I I love spicy food. You're right. Like, I mean, yeah, I can date a girl that doesn't like it because I'll just put it on mine. Uh, what, what's your favorite type of spicy food? Dude, Sichuan mala. Oh, that mala? I also yeah. like Sichuan la, sour and spicy. Sour and spicy. I Every time we go yeah. eat hot pot, you, yeah. you wasabi and eat the uh, was spicy Oh, dude. That's what I'm saying. If I'm dating someone, I want to be like, oh, I'm so excited. I want to go eat some good yeah. Sichuan food. I've noticed that. You know what I call it? It's a necessary evil. Because afterwards, you know, a lot of times when you have too much spicy food, you're going to pay for it in the bathroom. Yeah, but I'm, I'm, to, you the know all about that. I'm to the point where... I'm to the point where... Oh, anyway. I'm to the point where I'm so immune to it, I don't even care. <laughs> or your butt is so immune to it. Yeah, Just kidding. I'm totally immune to it. Tesla cars. Uh, do I want one? Well, what do you think about them? Uh, overly priced. Really? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Do you I mean, know how much they are? Oh, what, like 30, 40 grand? No, like 50 grand. 50 grand. And right? 90 for the... That's a lot of money. Okay, but dude, check it out. I was... I was on the highway driving back from Boston, right? Yeah. And I saw a Tesla Motors charging station. Sure. And it was all full with a line of Tesla. So literally, all these people who owned them. And when they got out, naturally, because not a lot of people owned them, they talked to each other. And I thought it was a really cool thing. And it's kind of like this club. like brotherhood club. So you want one now? Well, I want one. To join a club. Well, also, I talked to them. I was like, do you guys like it? And they were like, okay, assuming you can afford one, okay? That's, of course. They were like, yeah, it's awesome. Zero emission. And the technology is getting better and better. They have this new thing where you can swap out the battery now. And you can plug it in at home if you have a garage. And it's zero emission. I think it's awesome. If I had the money, I would absolutely buy one. If I had the money, I would just, uh, you know, buy like a... You'll never find out what I'm going <laughs> to buy if I have money. Las Vegas. Love it. Oh! Hate it. Best place ever for a trip. Thank you. Best place ever for a trip. Yes. Now, you will have different reasons. I love it because I used to love, I loved Campbell. Okay. I used to go to the sports book with all my buddies. Okay. I've been there probably like six times. Uh -huh. A couple times with my family, but like four times with like my friends. Uh, and I'm, not, I'm gonna keep going for whatever. For okay. the rest of my life. I love it yeah. for purely different reasons than anybody else almost on earth. I love it because I like the buffets. <laughs> so I go in there and I plan out each Dude. meal Dude. what I'm eating. Dude, yeah. you're like most people go to go to Vegas to plan out the shows. You actually go to plan, plan out around the, the food. food. I do. I Which plan is so around weird. the food. Which is so weird because it's just a buffet. Look, I love buffets. It's only it's there like, to get you to gamble more. Lost. You know well, that's where they screwed up because I don't, I don't, I don't gamble. You know me, I don't gamble. Right. I don't even drink. So you're, a I just eat. You just go there for the buffets. Yeah. No one does that. Everyone goes for the for the shows, the hotels. Weird. That's so weird. X Men: Days of the Future Past movie. Awesome. 
I want to see it. Yeah. Really bad. Yeah. Did you remember? Do you remember the cartoon when yes. I had that? Yes. Dude, I do. That was like a life event. The, for me. the cartoon before the 3D cartoons. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah, the yeah. original. No, the original, original Fox cartoon. cartoons. Yeah. With like the da 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 da. Yeah. Yeah. That was epic. Awesome. Awesome. Like I would literally like revolve my week around when the, the X Men cartoon would come. But you out. know what would annoy me about that? It never mm -hmm. wraps up to anything. Right. Right. It's just kind of like I, at least I, at least from what I saw, it just kind of kept going. Right. But yeah, I'm excited. I'm all. I, I'm. I love X Men. Right. I think it's cool too because they're gonna combine the old and the new cast together. I think that's pretty cool. But how many years do you think Professor X has? Because he's <laughs> the best Professor yeah. X. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. How many years do you think he has? He's like. Like oh come on! You can't, you can't say that. That's he's, come on! You just basically <laughs> all right, all right. I, I, I don't want him to leave. Yeah, I'm just saying, like, who's next? Yeah. Like Bruce Willis? Uh, no! Oh, oh, dude! No way! He's okay. too buff to be Professor X. Yeah, but he's. Oh, I mean, how many bald? Number one place you want to travel to in the world? Oh, number one for vacation. Yeah. I want to go to uh, Europe, Where? to Italy. Or France. One place. One place. One place. Choose. Italy. Italy? Yes, because Italy. I, Italy. 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 No, Italy's down the street. No, no, Italy. Because I want to see, I, I want to see, I love, I love Renaissance style art. I love it. So I want to see like, you know, uh, the Sistine Chapel. I want to see like the statues. I want to go to Florence, Rome. I want to do all that. And plus, you know me, I'm like a freaking, I love like, you know, olive oil and tomatoes. Yeah, you know me. Sampling cheese. Dude, and, sampling and, cheese. Dude, like the. Oh man, you tell me, dude. I'll be like harvesting. Think you're the better. Uh, yeah. Olives, dude. I'm gonna go pick like homegrown heirloom tomatoes with burrata muff burrata cheese, and you know what I'm saying. I love that stuff. Yeah, I, I mean, I, 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 I almost went there this year. I almost yeah. booked a trip there. I was gonna go to Rome, Florence, and uh, what's that place? That's sinking Venus. Venice. Venice. Oh. Oh. All right, guys. So that's the end of our rapid fire segment. Let us know if you like that. If you like, uh, if you like what we're doing. If you like, want to see it longer or shorter. Yeah, and uh, give us topics. Yeah. Give us questions to. Yeah, it's more fun when you guys give us topics to talk about. Because obviously, me and Mike will just talk with no topics. Like we'll yeah. just talk. All right, guys. That's it for the double chin show. So you really like it? Definitely let us know. And again, we want to get you guys involved. You know, and, and it could also, you know, this could evolve. Like we could event in the in the future, we could get some a guest or something. Yeah, yeah. We yeah. were thinking, you know, we want to take this far. We want to make this uh, yeah. be something that's fun and enjoyable for all. Of definitely, us. definitely. Yeah, we're gonna keep thinking of ways to make it better. You know, maybe like maybe make it into like a game show. We yeah. got like, you know, maybe like a we topic. We hire like a Vanna White. Yeah. That's what we need to do. Dude. Yeah. Let's get Yi or Mia to do it. Let's like. You think hire they would do it? Fan Bing Bing. Fan Bing Bing. Yeah. Let's get her. Hey, is is Fan Bing, is Li Bingbing and Fan Bingbing two different people? Different. Fan Bingbing is much hotter. Li Bingbing is like less hot. All right, later you show me pictures of them. Fan Bingbing is gonna be an X Men. Fan Bingbing is the round face one. No, no, no. Fan Bingbing is the fox demon. Oh, Li Bingbing is a round face yeah, one. I like Li, I like the round face what? better. Yeah. Fan Bingbing. You know so I'm gorgeous. into girls with like round faces. Oh, man, get out of here. Come on. All right, guys. Thanks so much for watching. Later, See guys. See ya. Bye.